let me see sound hello everybody can hear me now you guys can hear me now got off to that slow start can you hear me joe can you hear me jerry all right All right, let's get cooking here. This is like the radio station here when you get bombarded with ooh, nothing but silence. <laughs> so yeah, if you guys can hear me, we got a great show for you guys tonight. And I think it's gonna be fun for everybody here um there i am hopefully everybody can hear me now i'm gonna bring joe into the room <laughs> what is friday night without a little slapstick comedy here thank you everybody for tuning in brooklyn aquarium society good thank you galena the audio is on thank you my marox thank you everybody you know i'm like running like a chicken with my head cut off but i just wanted you guys to get a little overview of the speaker that we're going to have tonight, Jerry Brostick of Pinplex, is going to talk about innovations in the planted side of the hobby for people at the beginning. And I just want to add that there's a little something in here for some of my saltwater people. Don't think that just because something is geared toward just the planted side of the hobby that it does not have relevance or application to the freshwater and saltwater side of the hobby. So before we get into the meeting itself, I just want to make three little announcements. First of all, I want to thank you guys that took part in our online auction that we did our first Brooklyn Aquarium Society online auction a few weeks ago. We're going to be gearing up to do the giant uh, Brooklyn Aquarium Society auction in May. Hopefully everything goes well. So look out for that on the Facebook and YouTube channel, which brings us to the second announcement. Brooklyn Aquarium Society has created its YouTube channel Hooray for us. We've stepped into the new millennium, Brooklyn Aquarium Society on YouTube, where we're going to have previews of some of the long laundry list of speakers from across the decades, across the country and across the world. So check out the Brooklyn Aquarium Society on YouTube and subscribe, share it with your friends. If you have any questions or comments, email them. We love to hear from you guys. Um, last and before I turn it over to uh, Joe G to introduce Mr. Brostick. Um, I'm going to say we're going to have a big giveaway sponsored by Pinplex. They have been so courteous and so generous as to donate very, very what I think. I've spoken and looked at looked at this thing. It's it's going to blow your socks off. So if you want to take part in this giveaway, you're going to look. You're going to see a stream with a special code word and the email address in order to take part in the giveaway. So look out for that stream. I'm gonna put it probably halfway into the presentation. It's gonna scroll across the bottom of your screen. In order to take part, you're gonna to have to use that code word and send the email with your name and address to the email provided. So, okay, I know you guys get sick of me jibber jabbering here. Um, Joe G, you may have a few words to bring in. So I'm gonna turn it over to you, Joe. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Brooklyn Aquarium Society virtual meeting. This Tonight, we have uh, Jerry Brostick of Penplex, and he's going to be giving you a, a beautiful presentation on some great new products that uh, Penplex has, and, uh, and then go into uh, many things uh, that Penplex has, and I think you're going to enjoy a lot of the giveaways that uh, he's going to be doing in, in uh, tonight's show. So sit back, relax, and uh, enjoy the show. And cue Mr. Brostick. <laughs> <laughs> He's like Iron Man. There you go. <laughs> Wait, hold up. Thanks very much. Uh, oh. Thanks very much for the introduction. <laughs> Uh, my name, as as they said, my name is Jerry Brostek. Uh, I'm the chief operating officer for Penplex, and I'm delighted to be here tonight to talk with you about myself, about Penplex, our history, 
and some new products that we have that are related to planted aquariums. Um, absolutely. First, big shout out to uh, Joe Graphic Nino and Dee Manuel and everyone at the Brooklyn Aquarium Society for inviting me to speak today. Um, you know, it's important for this past year that we all stay in touch with each other. And even if you can't physically be with someone or if you can't go to the meetings, uh, I think attendance and, and two-way communication at events like this are really important to keep to keep you up on things and just to keep you feeling good. So thanks everybody uh, for attending. Um, in my presentation, as I said, I'm gonna talk about my history in the hobby and things that I've done. Um, I've enjoyed the fish keeping hobby since I was about 12 years old. And I can remember riding my Schwinn 10 speed bicycle down Northern Boulevard uh, to Fishtown USA. That is a store I'm sure many of you guys have gone to. And oh, memories, Jerry, memories. <laughs> I would, I'd ride my bike to Northern and then I would make it a point to walk through every single aisle in the store. They probably had 200 tanks and I'd look at the salt water and the plants and everything else. And then after spending an hour in the store, I'd probably spend a dollar 59 on a couple of sword tails or Danios, but that Every store owner loves that. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but I loved it. And you there know, you so 45 years later, I'm still in a house full of fish tanks. Um, right. and that's, you know, that's part of the idea. Um, in fact, growing up in Flushing, we didn't have a lot of money. And when my dad learned that I really liked my best friend's 10 gallon Metaframe fish tank with the old piston driven air pump that he used to breed guppies, uh, you know, my father jumped on it. And actually, my first aquarium wasn't an aquarium. Dad was at a trade show and they had a, a big plastic box used to wash bottles. And after the trade show, we repurposed this big plexiglass box into a 50 gallon aquarium. And at 12 years old, a 50 gallon aquarium was pretty cool. And uh, I, I'll never forget that. That was my very first aquarium. Um, in addition to going to Fishtown USA, I got some fish through a little bit alternate means. And, and D, I think you said you had a similar experience. Um, my local park in Flushing. In fact, let me start the let me start the presentation. Give me one second. Right. We'll take the back seat. <laughs> yeah, some of the some of the memories of like how people got into the hobby are like the most interesting stories because they always start with the local fish store. You know, that's why we really have to dedicate ourselves to making sure that these guys get support and that they stay in business. The first experience you have is that first trip to the local pet store. Okay, let me just get this started up with you in just a second. All right, can you can you see that there, uh, Joe and Dee? I got you, I'm bringing it on. Great. And now that I have the presentation up, uh, before I go any further, I want to send a great thank you to Michael Anglim in our marketing department, who actually put the presentation together. Uh, so thanks, Mike. I know you're out there watching thanks, and listening. Um, I spoke a little bit about uh, what I do here at Penplex. I'm the chief operating officer and fish keeping since 12 years old. And one of the things that I did that, I, as I said, I imagine a lot of us did, uh, this was a park, Bound Park, in Flushing, New York, that uh, I used to play in as a kid. And they were doing construction, and I think it was 74, and they drained the pond. And some truck came and took all the fish away. Uh, and I remember walking through, seeing a couple of fish still flapping in, in an inch of water. And I wound up taking home some koi, or uh, some carp, and some catfish. And I had them in a tank for many years um, and they became, you know, part of part of my house. Um, fish that you had that weren't necessarily bought at the pet store. 
Um, in addition to my own aquariums, I have a pond in the backyard that I dug with, uh, well, I wouldn't say I dug it. I supervised. I got a bunch of my nephews to actually do the digging. Um, and one of the things that's magical is, as you can see in the lower right, I've got a frog there. I threw a bunch of tadpoles in last spring. And we all know that eventually they turn into tadpoles, but it's still just magical when you see that frog and you realize that he went through metamorphosis. So that brought back the little 12 year old in me uh, this <laughs> past year when I saw those. Um, this is a photo of my 38 gallon corner. Uh, the picture's about two years old and it's full of various tropical, small tropicals. I like to change it a lot. Uh, currently I have two tiger Ox Oscars that are just way too big and need to be rehomed. Um, but we will get to that at some point. Anybody looking for nine inch Tiger Ox Oscars, give me a call. Um, one other thing about me is um, I'm in the hobby for 45 years. I'm actually this year celebrating my 35th wedding anniversary. And everyone knows the 25th wedding anniversary is like your silver anniversary. Turns out the 35th wedding anniversary is coral. And so I haven't told my wife yet, but I think I'm going to set up a reef tank and we'll see how that goes. Just set it up next to the couch. Uh, <laughs> Look for me next year and I'll, I'll let you know how all that worked out. <laughs> anyway, I studied in college electrical engineering uh, and I was a defense contractor for many years. Uh, I actually got my job through the New York Times. Some of the people on this presentation might remember that expression. Um, Throughout the 29 years that I've been with Penplex, uh, I've worked in most functional departments, including sales, marketing, accounting, product development, purchasing, and inventory management over the, as I said, over the past 29 years. I've had fantastic opportunities to travel the world and meet amazing people in the industry um, to share stories, ideas, Look at these fantastic thousand gallon aquarium setups. And I've had opportunities that uh, the regular people just would, it would be very tough for them to find. So the company I work for is Penplex. And we are a 60 year old, third generation, family owned and operated business. Um, since this is the Brooklyn Aquarium Society, uh, some of you might remember uh, Trop Aquarium, Saratoga Trop Aquarium on oh. Pennsylvania in Brooklyn. Well, that's how the business started. Uh, Marvin and Anita Goldman started a pet store in Brooklyn. And uh, it, was, it was a place, it became a happening place. People would come there almost for entertainment. Uh, I wasn't there personally, but I was told that they used to keep exotics, including monkeys, in the window so that kids walking by would want to come into the store and stare at all the other livestock. Um, we don't see a lot of that today. It's not, it's probably frowned upon or maybe not available, but at the time back in the late fifties, this was a real innovation and it made it fun. It made it an event to go to the pet store. Um, one of the famous, more famous stories from the, um, from the pet store days is the invention of rainbow gravel. When you go to Petco or your independent store these days, you see nice plastic bags of Estes gravel in a million different colors and sizes and shapes. Back in the day, at the bottom of the shelf, you'd see a box of natural gravel and a box of black gravel and a box of green gravel in little boxes. And the store owner would measure it and you'd buy it by the pound. Well, while the, the pet store was going, uh, Marvin and Anita had kids, Terry and Rick Goldman, the second generation, and they basically grew up in the store. And horsing around in the store, playing in the gravel boxes, all the colors got mixed. And so they were faced with three choices. You could throw it out, but that certainly wasn't happening. You could pay somebody to try to separate it into individual <laughs> colors, and that would have taken years. Or... Necessity is the mother of invention. They invented rainbow gravel. <laughs> and that's a true story. And as I've tried to verify it, but it seems to be the way that 
the rainbow gravel that you see in every pet store. Uh, that's yeah, where it came that, from. That is so a Brooklyn story. <laughs> It's uniquely I, I, Brooklyn. That doesn't happen in Los Angeles. That's no. Uh, <laughs> they the whole I, I remember going to the store and mixing the gravel purposely for that when I was a kid. <laughs> you know, we went to Tropical <laughs> Supermarket on Nostrand Avenue. They had all the bins with all the different oh. gravel. And you take a little bit of each and mix together because I liked the way it looked all mixed together. Oh, yeah. And I was probably 10, 12 years old at that time. But yeah, it's, that experience, that in-person yeah. experience, you can't buy yeah. it. Oh. So this was a pet store. And you're thinking late 50s, all of a sudden, plastics is uh, becoming very popular and molding. And some of the first products, we're going to talk about some Penplax products that I guarantee I'll see people raise their hand and say, hey, I had that or I still use that today. <laughs> um, they started working with vacuum form molding, but they didn't have the money to go buy expensive machinery. They took a vacuum an old oven from someone's kitchen, sheets of plastic, and started making products, including the first three-dimensional backgrounds that you've used in your various aquariums, your 10s, 20s, 29s, 55s. All those products were developed and invented and hand-painted uh, by the guys in Brooklyn. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As customers responded positively, uh, the the company made the decision to get out of retail and go more into wholesale and manufacturing. Um, the first factory was located, as I said, in Brooklyn. It's uh, we've since gone to Jamaica, Queens, and actually our world headquarters. We're now in Hop Hog, Long Island. Um, our passion has always been for pets, and really, one of the angles that Penplax tries to take. One of the angles that Penplax tries to take is about making it easier, making it more affordable, and encouraging young people to get into the hobby. Uh, those are important things. Um, affordable is always a really good thing. <laughs> well, if you don't have young people getting into the hobby, eventually there's no hobby. Yeah, it stops maybe. a lot of people because sometimes people don't realize how expensive it could be to set up a, a tank as small as a 30 gallon, you know, and if you can cut corners in different ways, that usually helps. Yeah. yeah and that's, that's really some of the direction that we, when we have product <laughs> development meetings is how can we make it easier? How can we avoid frustration? The, the last thing that you want, whether you're a hobbyist yourself, or maybe you're a pet store owner, you don't want someone to go in and, spend an hour picking out the tanks and lights and filters that they need to be successful and then get frustrated for a week and stop. That's not yep. the goal. So That's legitimately cool. everything Absolutely. that we think of when we're developing aquarium products are always about low cost, ease of use, and maybe a design that would attract new people to the hobby. Well, that's that's one of the things about club is to teach people the right way to keep a tank, not to start up a tank and you know two weeks later everything's dead because they had no idea what they're doing. They walk into a fish store and the guy sold them the tank, the fish, and everything in one day, and they threw it right in the tank. Yeah, and and yeah. and you that cried, happened. but I saw that today. I saw the woman with the the kid in one hand and the tank in the other hand, and I was like, oh boy, that's just that's ridiculous. Ridiculous. It's tough. Yeah, but fish store should you think would tell them that but no they don't care the fish dies because they'll come back and buy more they figured but yeah. you, you chase them from the hobby instead of taking a, a long-term customer you you in a short time they get discouraged and, and give up on everything yeah you don't want that and no. you know the people on this presentation are i would imagine uh, intermediate to advanced uh and they're always looking for better places to get <laughs> livestock um but if you don't if the stores don't have products to sell and if the stores don't have new consumers coming in to shop, then there are fewer stores. And if yeah. there are fewer stores, there's less livestock, et cetera, and so on. And that's what we're trying to avoid. So if you flash back to, say, 1965 or thereabouts, tank dividers. Um, again, I have to imagine that many of the people on, these, on today's presentation have used these. Uh, you have an aquarium, and you've got some guppies and sword tails. And then all of a sudden you see this beautiful Jack Dempsey in the store. You want to have that too. Well, you got two choices. 
You can get a tank divider and separate smaller uh, gentle fish from larger aggressive fish. And now that one aquarium became two aquariums. Simple idea, millions, literally millions sold uh, in the country. If you don't get a tank divider and you get that Jack Dempsey, tomorrow morning you're gonna have a very fat Jack Dempsey. Jack <laughs> Dempsey. <laughs> Wouldn't, it, wouldn't, you be, wouldn't you be surprised if you woke up and the guppy was still alive and the Dempsey was done? <laughs> That's a real Brooklyn fish. And those dividers are also great for when you're breeding fish. You want to keep a pair separate. I've done that with angel fish too. Sure. And 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 I'll and I'll jump on the back end of that. The tank divider is also good for salt water. I mean, you can separate clownfish, kind of entice them in exactly. the breeding. Yes. You yes. can do it with as small as a, a 10 gallon tank move them back and forth. I mean, there's a lot of salt water application as well. And it's a simple, inexpensive device. Yeah, nothing special, you know, that complicated or expensive. Absolutely. Yeah. Another thing that goes back probably 45 years, I think this was the early 70s, was a better way to control airflow. Everybody's using multiple airlines to drive at the time under gravel filters and maybe bubble filters. And the original valves were brass and uh, screw type. Mm. Yep. Brass made them fairly expensive. And the screw type, if you think about it, especially the early years with the vibrator pumps, the screws had a tendency to go out of adjustment. Yeah. And you'd spend a lot of time adjusting things. And a month later, this air stone has no air, and this air stone has too much air. Right, right. So how do you solve those two problems? Well, we designed, made injection molds, and did them in plastic, which at the time was kind of new. Yeah. Um, they adjust with the um, cock and ball system and made a very tight-fitting, uh, low-tolerance plastics. Once they're adjusted they stay adjusted. Mm. So very simple solution to some complicated problems. Again, still in use today. Uh, I have them on, on my aquariums and uh, been around a long time. And again, something sold uh, literally in the millions. Oh. Oh. Next, uh, the next product that might resonate with some of the people here on the presentation is what was called a Canistar power hang-on filter. And I know my first aquarium, I had the Supreme hang-on with the input tubes that you had to prime yourself. Um, this oh, yeah. was innovative, late 80s. And it oh, was yeah. a sealed canister filter, a sealed filter that hung on the back of your aquarium. Oh, yeah. And you could you could use floss. You could use any media you wanted. You could use diatomaceous earth if you wanted to, and really uh, polish the water. It hadn't been done before, and that was quite revolutionary. I'm thinking eighty four, eighty five. I I'm not a hundred percent sure on the year. God bless you, Pinplax, because I sucked in <laughs> I sucked in mouths full of water. If I can't be the no, only one, you had before, to put you had to put your thumb on that big tube and try to sting, and it would it lose air and it would oh, stop man, working. I, I think I almost got a beating because of how much water I got on the floor one time. <laughs> Until this filter came out, this was definitely like people now with the pumps that are, that are running now don't realize where these pumps started. Like the Canistar and those designs and those, those ideas launched this whole new generation that we got now. Yeah, it's it's important to know the history or and it's it is I find things interesting to see how quickly over the years things have developed. Uh now when I when you go to a trade show there are so many different filtration options available. Scroll it back 40 years there was not the same selection and not all the innovation that we see in the marketplace today. Um I'm going to go to another innovation of pen plaxes that again, re, it goes to the theme of trying to get younger hobbyists into the, uh, into aquariums. And so also designed with retailers in mind, the next uh, screen that we have, Action Air Ornaments, was 
a variety of air driven movement in different wow. uh, treasure chests and divers and giant clams and shipwrecks. Which that... we've all had on our tanks at one time or another. I don't care who says that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to put that guy in mine now. <laughs> <laughs> well, there again, probably started approximately 50 years ago, sales in the tens of millions and just hundreds of variations. The one, um, I'm going to scroll this video a few times because it is kind of funny. Um, as I said, I started with the company in 1992 and I'm going on the interview and I'm trying to do some research on the company. P.S. 1992, there is no Google. No. So you had to do research <laughs> the old fashioned way. You got to say, and, hey, yo, <laughs> like Rocky. <laughs> and when I went to my aquarium, I actually had the treasure diver with the bubbles coming out his ears. Yeah, yeah. So I went into the interview confident that I was going to nail this job. <laughs> I, I, I had guess. every one of those three on top there. Did you really? <laughs> yes, I did. I, I had I, the clam I'm, right I'm, now. I'm going to be 60 <laughs> now, and I've been doing this since I'm 10 years old. My dad has had tanks on since I was a baby, and he still does. He's 95, and he's still got a 100-gallon tank in the house. So I've been around fish all my life, and He's always had different tanks. He let me start up one when I was about 10 years old. He let me do my own 10 gallon. He had already had a couple of 29s at that time. And I had those in there. Great. With the, with, with the piston pump you were talking about, which I still have. You that still have to, you have to oil it? I, and, and I don't use it. I don't use that it. piston my pump just, got hot, boy. It got hot. <laughs> yeah, I don't use it. My father just won't let me throw it away. <laughs> I, I got to tell you, I told Jerry yesterday I begged my mother for this thing when I was a kid. That's the only one I wanted it because it looked like the creature from the Black Lagoon. <laughs> and she was like, no, it looks scary. I don't want to put that in. There. But it, it brings back memories. They're like trading cards. These things are, are you know, <laughs> they're collectibles. Yeah. Well, you know, D, I was following the, the comment thread and I saw someone had mentioned that these can be collectibles. So yeah. instantly I created this slide. <laughs> Of oh, Creature yeah. from the Black Lagoon. And I don't know the person who, who said that quote, but you're right. If you can find a creature in, in its original packaging. packaging, go to eBay. Okay. No, we're going to have our giant auction next month. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to search every bucket I got in my house. I'm sure something's in there, but uh, these things, are. I have that clam upstairs. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> I actually dug that. I stayed up last night and found that clam. That is funny. Another another thing that we do in an attempt to track attract kids is in addition to creature from the Black Lagoon or the clams, things that kids are drawn to, is that we enter licensing agreements with uh, large companies such as the Disney Company. And, you know, The Little Mermaid, uh, if you go back in the day when that movie came out, it was red, red hot. And it made sense, this is going to sound stupid, it's going to sound obvious, but it made sense because Ariel lives under the sea. And there you go. what we found is if you're making an aquarium or an aquarium decoration or an aquarium kit, if you're making it under a theme that makes sense underwater, they will sell a lot better. And while, of course, I'm in it for the sales, really we're in it to create new hobbyists. So the little girl who gets an Ariel to put in her beta tank and the little boy who gets uh, one of the other characters to put in his goldfish bowl, hopefully they have success and they, they grow into the hobby and get later on into breeding uh, cichlids and setting up reef tanks because that's really how many of us certainly started. Um, again, back in 92, when the mermaid came out, I'll, I'll never forget this. I was in the office and we really had no idea just how big Ariel was going to be. Mm. And I'm in the office and we had all of these various, uh, decorations and we had some aquarium kits and one of the inside salespeople starts running around saying, Hey, I've got somebody on the phone who wants 20,000 Little Mermaid no. Aquariums. <laughs> <laughs> True story. She happened to be a little girl. <laughs> Even better. 
So after I calmed them down and said, okay, somebody wants 20,000 aquariums. Did you get their name? I didn't recognize the name. He said he was the buyer for Toys R Us. Oh, yeah, that's good news. <laughs> yeah, wow. we, we picked up the phone right after that. <laughs> and we called him back. But it is. That's an example of just the crazy, uh, you know, some of the crazy things that we experienced back when we introduced Little Mermaid. <laughs> um, and back, back then, you know, again, you don't have Amazon back then. You don't have the internet. And it was a challenge sometimes to get the products into the into the brick and mortar retailers. Um, so we Penplax operates an extensive team of salespeople, both in our home office in Hopog as well as around the country in various states, calling on a thousand pet stores, trying to keep them abreast of the products that we know are going to sell in their stores. And absolutely something that sells in the stores now. I'd like to see either a show of hands or some comments on the comment field on YouTube. Who who's had who has the pineapple in their tank, <laughs> one of their kids' I, tanks? I bought that SpongeBob when my daughter was four years old. She's gonna be 18. <laughs> I have Patrick in my hand. <laughs> Let me tell you, that launched the, like a thousand projects that 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 one character because every time she came to look at the tank, she wanted to see if SpongeBob was still there, you know. And so if you watch the show, as I'm sure all of us do, um, it's not just SpongeBob, it's Patrick, Sandy, Squidward, Mr. Krabs, Plankton, um, as well as the homes. And, you know, certainly it's fun to have the characters. But as we know, the characters' houses, which is the pineapple, I'll go back to it for just a second. Um, the characters' houses, like the pineapple, or Squidward's house, or the crabby, the crab shack, uh, you know, they're designed with swim throughs and also as hiding places. So yeah, they're humorous and they're colorful and comical, but they also do provide uh, a function in the aquarium. After, after tonight's presentation, I encourage you to just go to YouTube and put in SpongeBob SquarePants Aquarium. Do that as a search. There are probably not hundreds, but thousands of kids and not so kids who have set up their aquariums with our decorations <laughs> and take videos. They're all over the place. It's really, we didn't encourage it, but it's it's became a phenomenon and we're very happy. Uh, we're getting a lot of comments. A lot of grown people have these things. <laughs> I'm they're getting not, a lot. You know, they're not kids. I noticed oh, that. Not, none of these guys are kids. These guys got Patrick. <laughs> Let me see. Who's this? Uh, okay. He's got the pineapple. Richard's got Pat Patrick on, on his mind here. It, it, it's, it's, it's fun. You know, it's all about the fun. If you got to, like, stress, put so much stress at work, and you come home, and you can look at this little, this little Patrick living in its own little world, it puts a smile on your face. And everybody was a was a kid before, and now they have children, and some maybe their children have children. So this is a multi generation uh, enjoyment. It's great. And a, just one other funny story, but true about SpongeBob, was when it first came out. When we first started selling the the program, we would be talking to buyers, usually made you know like a forty five year old man. And we'd make a presentation and they'd laugh at us. They'd say, this is the stupidest thing. I don't want it in my store. And we knocked on many doors only to be rejected. And so someone in the, on the team, I don't remember who it was. Someone said, let's go around the buyer. And we made lots of sample packs of SpongeBob and Patrick and Mr. Krabs. And we sent it to whoever the receptionist or whoever the secretary was. Give them a box and say, hey, you know what? put these on the cafeteria table or give them out to anybody in the office. And they became quite desired and people would hoard them. And that actually, we would then call back the buyer maybe a month later and he'd say, Hey, I've seen these all over my office. Tell me a little <laughs> bit more. And that's, um, that's how we got it into a couple of major retailers. I don't, I don't want to mention the name cause they're probably mm -hmm. watching, but it was, it's a true and effective 
way to sometimes convince someone, hey, you're missing the boat. Yep. And, you know, there are now literally millions of that pineapple in aquariums around the country. <laughs> um, SpongeBob certainly was our most successful, is and continues to be our most successful. Um, we have a number of other brands that perform well with different age groups, different demographics uh, in different countries. And two of those brands that you see on the right Trust are coming that. soon, where we'll be adopting uh, some images and iconics from Jaws or Jurassic World to be either in aquarium or in a reptile environment. And again, we try to do that in addition to the regular Penplax branded products as a way to always offer something new and to always offer something exclusive um, to our customers, whether they're pet stores, uh, mass merchants, or online retailers, which have certainly become much more important uh, over the past couple of years. I'd now like to, to talk about the main event or the reason, the title of today's presentation. Um, if you take a look at these pictures, these planted aquariums look incredibly tranquil and beautiful and peaceful. Um, I think some of these pictures might be from either from trade shows or from a, a famous aquascaper in China where they make these beautiful aquariums, as you can see in the photos. And I think what happens a lot, and again, I hope that this resonates with some of the people listening, uh, you see something that you want to duplicate, but maybe you kind of rush it. Maybe you cut a few corners. I, I'll give you an example, full, ex, full disclosure. I live in, in Merrick, and so I'm not too far from Jones Beach. And I never had a marine aquarium before. And I don't know what happened, but one morning I said, I want a marine aquarium. But I didn't want to spend a lot of money. And I took a bunch of Poland Spring five gallon jugs and drove to Jones Beach and took free water, thinking that this was the world's greatest idea. Why didn't anybody else think of this? <laughs> And I put it in an aquarium with uh, with an overhead drip filter and <coughs> like the next day threw some damsels in. And it, you know, I think everybody here knows where the story's going. I don't have those damsels anymore. <laughs> so what happens, you get inspired and you see these beautiful pictures. I mean, I, I love the aquarium on the upper right. Um, with, and you see there's only a couple of fish because fish only mess up these aquariums. You get that beautiful lush carpet on the bottom uh, and it's great. But what happens a lot is, you know, you rush out and, and maybe you don't do all the reading and you're not fully prepared and you try your best, but you wind up getting results that didn't come out exactly as you had planned. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little different. Just a little bit. I, I, yeah, it, it is green though. It's it's green. If you want a green aquarium, you got a green aquarium. <laughs> Maybe Algae you, is so easy to grow. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you didn't have an, the right substrate. I know we had a wonderful presentation on substrate uh, last month. So you could make a hundred different mistakes and get this as the result. And then what happens is you turned off. Um, you're not into it. And... You throw out the swords that you bought or the um, Ludwigia that you bought and you go back to just having an unplanted tank. And that's not the goal. So what we're doing is something new. And that's, again, that's the topic of the presentation, um, which we call Aquaflora, Aquaflora Resin Decor, um, where we're making it easier to start a planted aquarium. Maybe you don't need that CO2 bottle to bubble through the water. And maybe you don't need super high intensity light and you don't have to take the pH and all of the other parameters of your water every five minutes. But you want success. You want something pretty and you don't want it to be too expensive and you'd like it to be easy. Well, that's what aquafloras do. Um, these are patented and custom made. Uh, decorations that are impregnated with glossostigma elatinoids that 
when they're in the box, they look just like a little bit of green. Uh, there we go. I'm, I'll wait till the next slide comes up. And don't ask me to pronounce glossostigma elatinoids again. because uh, I was going to tell you, say it three <laughs> times fast. <laughs> it was easier to <laughs> learn how to say <laughs> graphic <laughs> Nino. <laughs> <laughs> Took me years to learn how to say that. <laughs> so that chart is a bottom, uh, is a before after. Before they come, it looks like some green fuzz on a mm. decoration, which is actually quite nice looking anyway. But once you put it in the water, over time, about two weeks, we'll get to it in just a second, the plants actually sprout. Yeah. And now, you don't that need- That is amazing. That is amazing to me. <laughs> because not, not, can't any of us that have tried to do a planted tank say that we have not tried to make that carpet grow like right. that is in that picture. That how, is not an easy thing to do. How does that stay dormant in the box to plant and still stay alive? Well, you heard me say patented. I can't give away that secret. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry about that. Okay, we so let me kill you. Another question. He says that we got to kill you, Jimmy. How long would it stay in the box before it's, 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 it has problems? Or can it stay uh, indefinitely? We're looking at better than two years. I can't quote a, wow. um, okay. a an expiration date, but we, we've right. been testing them for more than two years without, without incident. Somebody and just I said do, it looks like a chia pet. Yeah, that, <laughs> Je Jeannie says, yeah, it looks like a chia pet for aquariums. But if you, if you could grow it in those little shapes, great idea. shapes and crevices and, and things like that, that's awesome. I also, I do want to give a shout out to one of the commenters who properly identified the designer of the planted aquarium. Takashi Amano, correct. Yeah. Amano. That was yeah. Gary. Oh, okay. He, he passed away. Gary Van der Putin. They, um, you know, those tanks, the, the amount of time it takes to prepare those would turn off many, many people. So these are, uh, these are examples of before and after. On the right, you see the actual retail package. It comes in a, a, a clear box, so you can see what it looks like now, and you can see what it will look like uh, in just a few weeks. So once the screen refreshes, I'll show you what it looks like. Here we go. Mm, nice. Very nice. No, I don't know. So that's day one. Day three. We'll let it go through, and then I'll talk about it. Mm. Oh. That is amazing to me. Mm. <laughs> like, and, and again, you're hitting one target where it's it's reasonable to do. It's not, like I said, overly expensive to set this plant the tank up. We, you know, talk about that guy Mano. I heard he charged like ten thousand dollars to set up. Oh yeah, he did. And it was a and, ridiculous and, amount, of, and people would pay it. And and if you didn't manicure it, and when I say exactly. manicure it, exactly. if you weren't running the right CO two, he had four hundred dollar lights on there. You know, keeping something like that is really right. intimidating. So now, do you need CO two and all of that for this plant to grow? Well, I'm going to speak to that. These will be optimal in heated water that have fish so they're providing the nutrient cycle and has professional lighting. Of course, that's going to be optimal. However, they will also grow in a regular goldfish bowl with no additional lighting. Hmm. They'll grow in a tank with no fish. In fact, the, the actual the stop motion video that I'm showing here was a tank with no fish. Um, they'll grow with fish. Um, they, this is pretty hardy. We we experimented with a number of genus and species uh, seeds until we got the ones that we really thought oh. were going to be the most flexible through all water types. Your water's a little hard. Your water's soft. Your pH is. 7.2, your pH is 6.6, .6, wherever it was, we felt we were getting the best results with the glossostigma. And uh, really, the proof is in the pudding. So you now have pretty much a foolproof way to get that sort of carpet effect uh, that people were looking for without, certainly without spending $10,000. We can do it for a lot less. Um, and and you also get that, I mean, we're Americans. You get that sort of instant gratification. So shout out to one of the people. Again, I, I there's hundreds of people on the presentation. I don't know who did, who it was. This is a Chia pet for your aquarium. <laughs> yeah. So now one of the Facebook users uh, actually asked 
does it need to be fertilized? So I'm actually in my fish room right now and um, I'm looking at one that's been going, I'm coming up on seven months and they still are growing. I have not ever fertilized. Uh, basically by being in a tank with livestock, not only is the, not, excuse me, are, not only are the livestock and their wastes fertilizing the plant, you know, the plant actually removes some nitrogen that might otherwise develop algae. So mm. the, the simple answer to the question is there is no need to add additional, uh, you know, liquid fertilizers of any sort. Will they help? I don't think that they would hurt, but there is no additional work necessary to achieve these kind of results. <laughs> Carol says these look like plants that I won't kill. <laughs> we're getting, we're getting a, apparently a lot of people have attempted to do this on their own and without the you know the know-how to start it off. It it can be intimidating. So this is as Michelle says amazing. Like it gives people confidence if they see this like product comes out of the box it takes a not so much um, equipment and upfront setup to get started. You're going to get a lot of people trying to get into the planted aquarium. I could do a plant. I could do a tank full of these by itself. And I, I want to get one shaped like Steve and like have the hair on the top grow. Like the plant <laughs> on the top. Then, I'll have my, then I'll have my one side will be my head, one side will be his. Like before. <laughs> <and after>. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's again. I think that. This product is really indicative of what Penplax is about. It's it's a lot of fun to go to the trade shows or to go to a store and to see this incredibly complicated tank and you've got wet dries and sumps and CO2s and blah, blah, blah. And that's great. And there's, there's a, a market for that and a lot of people enjoy doing it. But if you're a 12-year-old kid from Flushing, on your Schwinn 10 speed bicycle with a dollar 59 in your pocket, you can't do that. Yeah. You still want it, but you can't do it. And, and what we have here is a way to, you can get pretty darn close with the Aquafloras and, and still get your aquarium decorated. Um, and you, you see the life uh, it's, I mean, everyone in the office at this point, we have tanks all over the office. Uh, testing this, testing that. We, I've got uh, glossostigma coming out my nose in the office. Everyone is into it because they make just such great decorations in the aquarium. And uh, uh, now, Mr. Lund says, are there different plants available uh, yet, or is this this is still like the prototype phase? Like you guys coming out? You well, right now the next the next slide up shows you the different shapes and sizes uh, that we have, and the I'll, I'll mention that the picture is not really to scale because the one on the upper right is actually my favorite because it's just a flat disc that you can put on the bottom of the aquarium and, you know, obviously it will start growing. You could put two or three and, and get that sort of carpet look. To, to speak to the question, we're not ready. It's based on the response. It might be something that's a topic of discussion in the office Monday. Uh, but we were most happy with the glossostigma results. Um, okay. We may start looking at other opportunities, but the key is it has to be shelf stable. It has to be hardy. And we want to, the single most important thing to us uh, is that the results are satisfactory. We want to be able to, you know, to know that everyone who buys this at their local fish store or Petco or Walmart or Amazon.com, that whoever buys it and wherever they buy it, that they're going to get the results that they're looking for. I don't want anybody disappointed. But we uh, we will have to take a look at some of the other uh, plants that were available. Uh, what I really like about the Glosso is, again, I'm, I'm you can't see me, I don't think, but I'm looking at the one in my tank, and it's six or seven months later, and they're still there. They I, I don't think that they regenerate by rhizomes, but mm. it's still there and looking nice. The Oscars haven't bothered with it. Um, in That's some tanks, you're probably, too. I would imagine tanks with certain fish, they might pick at it as they would any live plant. And that's good too. 
Now, do you guys have a, a price point in mind, or are you guys still in talks about that? Like, how much you well, think that something like this would go for? You know, that's a great question because uh, it also speaks to. I'll put my marketing hat on. Uh, <laughs> we try to hit different price points. So, the smaller one, I think, I believe, the entry level price point is sixteen dollars retail. Oh, that's great! They, yeah, they may go great. up for something larger something that has more seed and more resin and is just physically larger. I think that the top price might be $29.99. Oh, that's still not great. Still not that's, oh, that's still great. You can spend more than that a couple of plants in the store. You can spend yeah. that on just the starter plants, the right. st especially tissue culture plants, like 15 bucks for a little cup. And you're getting a plant and you're getting the ornament or a rock, whatever you want to say, in, in one thing too here. Yeah? Right. It's actually pretty reasonable, I think. We try. You know, that's – we are sometimes we'll either develop something or someone will will come bring something to our attention that could be a lot of fun or could be a great product. But if when I had answered Dee's question, if I had said, oh, the smallest one has a retail of ninety nine ninety five, you're going to sell three pieces. Yeah. And, and again, that's not what we're about. We try to we try to aim our products for the broadest acceptance. Um, if you have something that's one hundred dollars retail, it will never be in in Walmart. That's not what their department does. But there's a lot of people in the country for whom Walmart is their local pet store. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't have they don't have Fishtown USA to drive their bicycle to. No. Uh, and so we feel an obligation to be able to hit a number of different retail price points because the goal is to make the products as readily available uh, you know, to every hobbyist. So I was going to guess at this cuz I have seen something similar to glossa stigma but you've had it in your tank for a few months for for about six or more months have you seen it spread off of the base off the resin base like grow i know they grow out kind of like java moss but it it's not a rooting that that plant's not a root extending what do you call that uh, a rhizome spreader or a runner right. it doesn't send out a runner okay so then then i'm what someone was asking or, t or telling? Yeah, they were asking, will it spread off the resin oh, base? Oh, okay. Okay, thanks. For you. It was a great explanation because while you were speaking, I was looking at mine in my tank. And the tank's green right now, so I can't show you. I haven't cleaned <laughs> it because I was preparing for tonight's presentation. So you can have one or the other. Because <laughs> I haven't known that plant to grow off. That's what he just asked. That's what he just like asked. It, like it's, it'll, it'll stay on the object that it's... Resin right. It, it doesn't spread off. I don't think it's invasive no. um, if that's the purpose of the question. And I don't believe it will. So uh, maybe maybe the question is, can I use this as a starter? And over mm. time, it will eventually blanket the whole bottom yeah. of the aquarium. Probably. I don't believe that's don't the case. That. No, that's that's not. If we could, maybe that will be in next year's model. Well, <laughs> well, 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 the fun, well, the funny thing here, here's an idea, too, depending on these structures you can attach it to, they can be connecting. Like, you know how we have reef rocks, Steve? We could have yep. rocks that you could attach one to the other and kind of create a rockscape with yeah. living greenery on it. I mean, they could be of any size, you know? Because my, yeah, my brain is processing this this right now. Like, man, yeah. I could, I have this tank behind me that, you know, to grow that stone with rock work, is a lot of work <laughs> but if i could blank at the bottom with a piece like yours and have it ready in what yeah a month selling zillions that, that's awesome and, and they're reasonably priced even you had to get a couple of them for a tank it's not you're not going to break the bank with that you know no no by right. all means tissue culture is probably three times that right exactly and um you know and depending on the size of the tank um yeah, you could do multiples. You could you could buy multiples of the same shape, or make sort of a um, a diorama with different shapes. If you look at them, we tried to stick to a natural look, where we've got a stump, we've got a small flat rock, and we have a two that look like a few that look like mountains. That's done to to so that it blends in with your existing aquascaping to the best of its ability. Mm. Um, Who's to say that, you know, next year we won't come out with maybe some more fanciful. Uh, we don't have a shipwreck here. I'd love to see it on a shipwreck, 
that's mm. been down there for a couple of years and has plants growing. Um, yeah. There are endless possibilities. The reality is we try to meet different price points as Dee brought up. Uh, we try to make different sizes depending on your particular so tank and, and what you want to do with it. But we, we never really come out with just one skew. One skew has a habit of, um, of not selling. Mm. Uh, it doesn't get placement in the store. It becomes like a one trick pony. We yeah. we've learned as marketers that if you have a line, a complete line of product, you get more shelf space. And once you get the idea across, well, Joe likes the one that looks like a stump and Frank likes the one that looks like a mountain and Mary likes the one that looks like something else. So, you know, that's the reason why manufacturers try to do multiple SKUs, sizes, price points, and personal taste. So now uh, another Davis says that he's currently available because I see someone says they have one that looks like the stump. These are currently available. He and says he has it and he loves it. <laughs> he loves them. He's very pleased with it. The first place that we encourage anybody to go, especially in a group like this, is to your local fish store. Mm -hmm. um, they're the ones who have the best selection, who need support, who rely on your foot traffic to stay in business. Um, for people throughout the country, these are currently in Walmart. They are on Amazon.com. And they are coming soon to your local Petco, another 1,200 stores around the country. I don't have the Petco in-store date but they will be there soon. So basically, within a couple of months, no matter where you live, anywhere in the contiguous 48, and I think Hawaii too, um, you'll have access to it. Uh, not everybody is an online buyer. There are still some people who prefer to touch and feel and smell the product. And, and that's why we're putting a big push to get them into each and every of the local pet stores that we serve throughout the country. Nice. See any other questions on this? I, I see a lot of typing in the thread. I can't read it from here. Anything else that you think is that I could possibly answer? I see the comment about the pineapple. That's not a bad idea. <laughs> we'll take that under consideration. And you can still add other plants next to it. They're not going to harm you. They're going to affect the growth of either one of them. Nope. No, no contraindications. Right. Um, non-invasive right yeah like i said it looks like a great idea i mean like i said it's reasonable it's easy to grow I and mean, what more could you actually if you want to plant a tank and you want it simple and I've been a, a, lot, a lot of us out there have a lot of yeah. us out there have tried it and plant the tanks can be expensive you know i've been throwing a lot of the questions out as as they've been coming so we've been getting we've been kind of keeping up to date but um, yeah, no, no fertilizer required. Um, if you are fertilizing your tank, it probably can't hurt that much. That that particular uh, variety of plant isn't a runner. It's not one that sends out a runner or uh, drops off and reseeds itself, as far as I've seen. But um, yeah, I mean, the fact that I could get two or three of those and have a whole tank going, that's awesome. <laughs> that's 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 pretty pretty cute pretty cool yeah all right well thanks i'm glad to, uh, certainly i appreciate uh the positive responses we'll go on now i will uh i'll switch to the next slide so just give me a second okay we did that there we go just i'm gonna wait to uh till the next slide updates and then i'll i'll close the presentation with some other trends that we're seeing in the industry um, bingo. Okay. So um, in addition to the interest in planted tanks and, you know, live plants in an aquarium is nothing new, but pet stores have fed back to us and industry data has fed back to us that planted tanks and combining plants with fish is something uh, growing. And it's not just us aquarium hobbyists. It's also people who are more into the plant side. So sometimes the question is, is this an aquarium that happens to have some live plants in it? Or is this uh, a thing for live plants grown in water and I happen to have some fish in it, right? Two, two sides of the same coin. 
And so the product that I'm showing here, we call an aquatarium or a planting tank. And in the bottom, you've got, I think, a gallon and a half, if, uh, if I'm correct, uh, of filtered water that, you know, you could throw some Danios in, you throw a couple of neons in, they're having fun. Uh, in the back, there's a mountain piece that uh, has a power head behind it. That, so it becomes a waterfall. And on the waterfall are different uh, planting sockets that you can put live plants in. You can grow wow. herbs, pothos. There's a whole number of plants. You can throw, put bamboo in there that thrive in very wet conditions. We all know some of them. We, we see the people who, who stick a sweet potato in their aquarium all the time. Um, and so again, here, all in one box, product that you can understand, instructions that both appeal to someone who is into fish and would like to test a little bit in live plants or someone who loves growing plants and wouldn't mind having a few fish swim in the bottom. The, the light that you see at the top is an LED um, with a plant growth spectrum. So you actually get what you're looking for. Um, and we've seen these in herbs, depending on what state you're in, different herbs have recently become legal. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, obviously I'm talking about in New York anyway, basil and, um, basil. and, 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 uh, parsley and things like that. Hey, you want to get your wife to uh, allow another one in the kitchen? You just put some basil, some thyme and some oregano on that. <laughs> oh, the, and then you got a nice sure. kitchen. You got an excuse to put a tank in the kitchen and you could tell you, know, you did Steve. it. Uh -huh. There you go, Steve. They put that on the menu. <laughs> Can right I use counter. that? I'll give you credit. I'm, I'm going to put yeah. that on the box. Yeah, you put some oregano, put some thyme or some basil on there, and it's a kitchen tank now. And as I said, uh, you can see the spectrum there uh, with the growth light specifically for... Oh, there we go. Okay, I was just looking for the video. 620 nanometer. Right? Uh... <laughs> and oh, there it is nice. in... You'll that's see the video nice. pop up in just a second with a very happy pair of red platies platy. swimming around uh, in their in their aquarium. That's really nice, right there. Wow. So, you know, again, the point is uh, trying to be creative, trying to keep our local pet stores uh, full of product that will attract new customers, um, keep them in business. Certainly, that's everybody's goal here. Um, while providing entertainment for all of us, things that we like playing with as hobbyists and regardless of how much time per week you have to put into the hobby, whether it's something you do an hour a day or an hour a month, um, you know, making things that, that give us pleasure, that bring a little bit of nature into the house. And now, so- now now I have a question too to jump in there. Like like this particular picture, those are living plants or are those artificial? I'm gonna have to get real close to the screen just to check. <laughs> Cause I'm like, I'm I'm thinking the first one, I know you were talking about it has planter boxes in it. I mean, that's pretty much cycling your tank. Live plants. Yeah. I mean, They're yeah. all live, yeah. Live plants. Or, you know, yep. somebody's getting a you know, a kid's getting their first tank. That's ideal. I mean, I just saw a woman buying a 10-gallon tank. She's buying a filter. She probably didn't know one from the other. She's got a gear grab. She's doing all this stuff. The tank is way bigger than this, so it's it's not as pretty as this is. And that's like a beautiful starter setup right there. Yep. Yep. This, is it, and there was a filter in the back you said on that thing? Well, I was just about to say, we have a power head running a sponge filter. Okay. Um, and it's submerged, so it's drawing the water from the bottom and then shooting it out the top of the waterfall. So you've got tons of oxygenation. The, the oxygen exposure, the surface area is huge. Um, and it's a sponge filter, so it will go uh, rinse it out. And, yeah, 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 exactly. Um, it's this is not designed for uh, carbon mm -hmm. and you know, maybe fancier filter media, this place to put it in, but I'm not expecting anyone to use this tank to bleed, to breed cichlids or anything complex. This is more of a decorative tank. Whereas you see, we got a couple of platies in there and they seem to be having some fun. Um, 
this product, since it's a little more niche, it's not as um, as broad appeal. This is easier to find online than in brick and mortar, and it's less than one hundred dollars. I think this is eighty four ninety nine. I believe that's the price point. Um, hmm. Not bad. And there's there's a whole again a whole line. It's not sure if everybody listening was aware, but especially with uh, all of us being in our houses alone for the past okay. year, the growth of home gardening has just been incredible along with the aquarium industry. And I think everybody here knows if, and in case you don't, the aquarium industry had tremendous growth last year because you were in your house for a year. So millions of people, I'm sure everybody here knows okay. uh, someone who went out and adopted a dog or a cat. Me. From the from their shelter. <laughs> did you really? I did. Okay. Yeah. Well, multiply that by a million. And yeah. now you know why some of the shelters are empty. But at the uh -oh. same time, a, a million other people went into the basement or the garage and got out that old 29 and hooked it up and went yep. to the pet store. The, the aquarium stores <coughs> really did a lot of business last year. They were essential businesses because they sold food. And really had a, a very good um, a very good result. And so what I'd like to do now is I'm going to go back a few. Oh, there we go. Okay, you'll see it in a minute. There's a little bit of a lag. And D, maybe you can give us the code word for everyone who's been so patient for the past hour watching the presentation, listening I snuck to me. The, I snuck the code word down there, so it's been playing. So I was telling them. They better get this code word right now. The code word is Instascape. So get that, that code word Instascape, and you're going to email it to Brooklyn Aquarium Society at Hotmail. So that's B-K-L-Y-N Aquarium Society at Hotmail.com. And take a shot at you getting one of these. Don't ask me tomorrow. Don't ask me at like 12 o'clock tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Send that email now because supplies are limited. We don't have a limp, we don't have a limitless number of these. The first few people to put in will, will be the lucky few. And we got a lot of questions. Is it available? How much is it? Where can I get it? Here is your chance to be one of the lucky few. Thanks. Darn for it, that I'm putting plug. my name in the hat. <laughs> I'm putting my Thanks name in for that hat. plug, D. You know, we do have a limited supply. Uh, I'd have a lot more, except for somebody crashed in the Suez Canal. And oh, oh yeah, that guy. That they guy, yeah. Know, they still don't know how he, he turned that whole freighter sideways into the canal. It's not easy, but anyway, yeah, we have, we do have a, a certain supply for our friends uh, listening in tonight, and um, and we want you. To, hopefully, you like the product. If you like the product, you know, tell your friends. Like. Uh, like Carton does on the fan. Tell your friends uh, if you like it. I hope you do. Um, that is, that's the end of my presentation or what I had planned to speak about, but I would love to, to answer any questions at all about well, the industry, about pen plaques, about the Mets, anything you could think of. Uh, <laughs> the Mets, there, there, hey, there how was, was the game? How was there the was game? a question that just went by too. They said, is there any heater in that tank or can one be put in there? Mm -hmm. The you could put a heater on its side. Probably you have room, maybe for uh, probably one of those fixed wattages, twenty a uh, like heater. a twenty-five watt without yeah, the. That's all you would need with that small tank, a, right? Yeah, they have a yeah. beta heater, like they have those little flat beta heaters. They right, and they're not like thermostatically hours, adjustable; they're just permanently on. They're really warmers, and so the answer is yes, you could put a heater in there, but not very big. Again, it's only about a gallon and a half okay. of water. Don't throw a 300 watt uh, Evo Jagger in there or something, right? <laughs> <laughs> melt, melt the aquarium. Yeah, please don't do that. <laughs> and I sent the code. The email is in the banner streaming right now. So I'm going to stop it in a few. So I'm giving you guys a chance to get it. I put it in the comments. Uh, yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. Yakety smackety. <laughs> But um, yeah, this, this, I'll tell you, uh, Jerry and I talked about this the other day and, you know, at heart, we're a lot of fish geeks, you know, I, I can't say that I'm not guilty of trying to do this. I, I glued a Nubius, you know, I, I make a lot of videos on, you know, 
affordable ways to get into like many aspects of salt water and fresh water and and this is a really really innovative way to build out an aquascape without completely doing it from scratch i also don't think that you need a heater for the um for the aqua terrarium since it's going to be in your house maybe in your kitchen or den or something like that or possible office it's room temperature, so everything should be fine without it. Yeah. Well, yeah, depending on your much. houses. You know? Yeah, some people run their rooms at 65 at night. Right, exactly. <laughs> but, well, but like exactly. my my beta my beta tanks, I have three or four, one or two. Only one of them is actually heated. They actually fish actually adapt to a certain range of temperature swing. Certain fish. You know, as long as it yeah, as long as certain fish are, are the case and it's not drastic. You can have cool water fish too, like white clouds or uh, yeah, white you clouds, know other chilies. other small like uh, uh, tetras and stuff that mm -hmm. would uh, go in uh, cooler temperature waters. That would be nice, and they're very pretty as well. I'll tell you, the We've chili used... fish are really pretty, and they are pretty cold cold water tolerant. I I kept mine down to like seventy, and it's and I'm sure it's probably dropped lower than that once or twice. But uh, yeah, a lot of species will go for it. The Danios, we, we've used like zebras and also white clouds. Uh, those are the ones most common that we use uh, in our advertising. We have aquariums all over the office. And I don't tell people that they're fish. I say they're actors because we do sometimes have to take them out of the, the my aquarium or the CFO's aquarium. And we use them in advertising videos <laughs> or product videos that we use on, uh, say, on Amazon or Chewy or somebody like that. But the the other thing on the planting tank is that the the submerged pump also generates a little bit of heat. So the water is going to naturally be a little bit warmer than the room that it is in. And that's for a white cloud and for a, a zebra. Uh, really, that's that's more than enough uh, heat for them. Yeah, it's it's really pretty plug and play. <laughs> you know, it's right. It's nice right. and simple. It's not intimidating. You know, you're not gonna like know. rake your mind trying mm -hmm. to figure out how to keep the plant alive. I know I've done that probably fifty times. That's I fantastic. probably see this as being a build. Like, if you let's say you start off a forty breeder, you can start with a mountain. Then you can go with a log over here. You can go. You can go modular mm -hmm. with this and yeah. actually build what it is that you want. It's a fantastic oh, wow. idea. Thank you, Love Vincent. It. Vincent Patano for a twenty dollars super chat. Thank you, Vincent. Awesome. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna give you guys a shout out. Um, we got super chat from Vincent. Greatly appreciated. We got from Farm Boy Reef. Greatly appreciated. I'm going to take these funds that we get from the super chat and I'm going to build with the president. Don't tell the president because he's holding on to the a bank account right now. <laughs> I'm going to take the super chats and I'm going to get a super chat prize that we are going to actually give away for users in the Facebook page. So look out Facebook users. If you're not already subscribed to the Brooklyn Aquarium Society YouTube channel, a lot of the content is going to move over to the Brooklyn Aquarium Society YouTube channel. And I'm going to use the super chats to do that. So we're going to give it back to the users because that's the kind of guy I'm not. I am, you know, I'm not going to stingy. I could buy some lights for this baby over here, but I'm going to give it back to the people because I'm for the people. Power to the people. David, David, I gotta tell, I'll tell everybody in front of everybody. David does a lot for us, and he's always one of the first to volunteer. And uh, with, with people like him, the club wouldn't be around, you know. And unfortunately, there's a small group of us now, you know, that that actually do what we, me, Joe, David, and a few other people help out, you know. But David's always there, first to volunteer, and we appreciate you. I'm crying. Don't cry. I, listen, I know as soon as the screen goes off, you're actually gonna cry. <laughs> As as well, I'm gonna ask the screen goes question. off. I'm gonna go put Patrick. You're gonna, back before you're I gonna go. On you're gonna go tell your wife they do love me. <laughs> they love me. They really love Patrick. <laughs> I'm gonna ask a question of Joe, and I don't know if it's one you're prepared for, but you can. We'll just do it live. So today's April. Um, any idea? Are you doing any thinking yet about when we'll be able to meet again? 
uh, live? Any kind of month that you want to throw out? Because I know people have been asking me that. Uh, North Jersey Club is going to meet on April 27th in the New Brunswick Hotel for a giant auction. Wow. It's going to be, uh, yeah, COVID proof, uh, you know, distancing, uh, um, sitting six feet apart, wearing masks. They're only going to allow 85 people in. So that's a start. And there's also two club meetings, uh, I believe one in July, which is going to be the American Cichlid Association. They're going to be meeting in St. Louis, Missouri. There is a hotel that's going to be putting people up for their annual convention. And then you have the American Killifish Association is going to be meeting also in the same place, St. Louis, Missouri, in the same hotel in, uh, I believe it's August. Uh, they're going to be meeting then. And there's another club, uh, Saltwater Marine Club, going to be meeting in September in Florida. So, yes, I think we're starting up. Large event, yeah. Yep, we're getting there. We're getting there slowly but we, surely. We have we're trying to, to plan for it. We we have our meetings in the New York Aquarium in Coney Island, if everybody knows. And uh, we have spoke to them already. They're not ready to let us in yet. You know, and, and uh, they're just starting to open up now. They're still keeping restrictions and stuff when you go in there. So we're hoping not too long, you know, but, you know, we miss having these meetings and getting everybody together and. And, sure, and by all know. means, it's 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 not us. You know, we have to keep the safety oh, of yeah. everybody involved as front <laughs> center. But um, yeah, we just have to be mindful of you know situation at hand, and we would not put anybody in harm's way. But of course, of course. if we did open, how could we say, okay, you can get in and you can't get in, and you can right. get in? You have a reservation, and and, and it becomes a whole big thing but um yes thank you trevor for a 20 dollars super chat you guys are gonna have one hell of a prize i'm gonna have to get a few prizes I'm gonna, i think i'm, I'm gonna, gonna get a few things and and kind of try to do stuff for as many people as i can so i appreciate you guys on, on our average night we usually have at least 100 people and stuff much as 150 sometimes so if like mm -hmm. i said they restrict us to let's say 75 what are you doing 150 show up at your door and, and you know, how you do know. you pick and choose you know and when we have speakers like Jerry here, we're gonna have to turn away two hundred and fifty people. You know, that's right. I, that's may, I make true. it kill. I make it. I make it killed at the door. I'm the guy at the door, like <laughs> front line and center. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it, it's great talk tonight. It, it was really nice. Um, I gotta say, because Brostick's main concern is he says this is not a commercial for Pinplex. We want to talk about the user. We want to talk about the fact that we want to keep intro level hobbyists in the hobby so every time we get a person in the hobby and get them started the right way you know get them started the right way they stay right. when you when you throw a lot at a person they get in a hobby the tank fails it looks green like that picture they're like oh you know this is too much work this isn't for me that's a hobbyist that doesn't come back and 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 not only have you sent them away that but that bad experience translates into their kids saying, like, no, I had one as a kid. It was bad, and yada, yada, yada. So I'm 100% for giving into the hobby and trying to keep it affordable and, sure. and making it a successful experience for everybody. Right. You know, we, as a club, obviously, that's our main objective is to teach people not to open the killing machines, you know, just everything dies in there, you know. And and I've had experiences with, with people that tell me that they wash their tank every week out of one lady actually yeah. told me she she uses palm olive every week and wants to know why the fish die. <laughs> <laughs> but, but they're sparkling clean when they die. <laughs> but I like that tank clean, yeah, but you can't put so you know people don't and it really... softens her nails while she does dishes. Right. Sometimes simple <laughs> you know... things as soap, cologne, perfume on you, things like that, you know. And it's really not that hard to keep efficient. If you're getting into, you know, a reef tanks and plant, yes, it's a little bit more of a level up. But to start on an entry level tank is really not that difficult if you're going to put a little bit of time. And it's not, you have to spend hours every day, you know, but you have to know the right way. When you walk into a store and they hand you a tank with the fish in the bag and everything here, go here, put water in it. They don't tell you anything else. You know? Yeah. And I saw it today. I, you know, it takes, you know, when we, when we go in and we're, and we're nuts, like, you know, when we go in and you sit next to someone 
back, you see them with the tank in the arm. The lady had the tank in her arm. She had the kid's hand. She's like, oh, I like that fish. What fish you like, Timmy? Or you like the gold one? And I'm like, oh, God, this poor fish. If fish could talk, they'd be screaming. <laughs> like, please please buy that another guy. Home to put that in. Yeah. Well, let they'd me just. Like, please buy him. <laughs> let me share one story that is 100% true and will probably resonate because it certainly speaks to what you were just sharing. I mentioned at the beginning that I've worked just about every department in the company. I did about a three-week stint on customer service. Toughest of all the jobs I've had, that was the toughest. But we get this lady calling, and she was complaining about an air pump. The air pump's not putting any air, air out. You know, I want my money back. I'm, I'm very upset. And I said, well, I'll walk you through it, ma'am. It's okay. Our pumps work. She's like, I don't need you to walk me through it. I plugged it in and I put the pump inside the aquarium uh, and I don't see any bubbles. <laughs> She's lucky that's all she didn't see. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so to my point, it's a little humorous, but true. A and yeah, you know, you have to, you have to just like the woman using palm olive to keep her aquarium clean. Don't assume anything. Say no, it you, twice, you, you say can't. it slowly. You know, I, I'll tell please you. Please don't throw your air pump into the aquarium. That's not the well, way. Well, well, the air pump bubbled, but it only bubbled once. <laughs> on the way down. <laughs> on the way bubbles down. And sparks, bubbles and sparks. But I'll tell you a quick story. There was used to be a store on on Notion Avenue that closed up now. But he's a lady would come in when Nemo came out, and she wanted these clownfish, so he sold her two clownfish. Next week she comes in, she buys two more clownfish. He just went on for like four or five weeks. Finally says, "Well, you got a lot of clownfish. No, they keep dying. She says, well, what are you doing? I put them in a, she, a bowl. She goes, no, this is salt water. She goes, yeah, I pour kosher salt in there. They keep dying. <laughs> well, they're kosher at least. I must have sold her like five pairs of them he's before I realized this. <laughs> now, said, the fish, I, the I have, fish aren't I have, kosher. <laughs> I have one thing to bring up. The North Jersey Aquarium Society meeting uh, is Sunday, April twenty five. In North in North Brunswick, New Jersey. Yes, I stand NJ, corrected. Thank NJ, you, Karen NJ, Haas, for that. April twenty fifth. I appreciate it. April twenty fifth. Um, let you. me see. There was a few people are shouting out their clubs now. Um, right. And if you have questions, I'm also trying to cross promote all of the clubs on their Facebook pages. A lot of these clubs have the Facebook pages. Good. If these clubs, and this is a shout out to the clubs, if you're not members of the NEC. Look into becoming a member of the NEC, the Northeast Council of Aquarium Societies, because we're trying to communicate all of these organizations and events so that people know what's open and what's not open. And the NEC uh, virtual convention, another project <laughs> that I'm working on, I need like four more arms, is coming out toward the end of this month. It is coming really quick. Go to NEC's website to get the information on registering. It's April 23rd to the 25th. So on the Northeast Council of Aquarium Society's websites, you'll have information on registering as well as links to a few of the other clubs that may or may not be in your area. If not a member of the NEC, look into joining. Thank you. That was my soapbox moment. Right. <laughs> But uh, yeah, keeping people in the hobby, whether it's salt water, I always say I don't focus on one part of the hobby, salt water, fresh water, because the science, yes, the science is the science and people get intimidating. Uh, my buddy, Farm Boy Reef, he's got a 600-gallon salt water tank. He had 800-gallon <laughs> salt water tank. He had a 50-gallon tank. He had a 200-gallon Fresh water has really, to him, he says, B, fresh water is so tricky and complicated. I said, you got a 600-gallon saltwater tank. Mm -hmm. Like, I want people to have the confidence. They're all easy as long as you have the knowledge. That's you just the jump key. into it without learning first. And before That's I started the, the reef, tank, reef tank, I must, now I've been keeping fish tanks for years, but about mm -hmm. 15 years, 18 years ago, I wanted a reef tank. I must have read four or five books before I did it. Oh, you know, I went through joking. books, I went through things, I went into all the fish to find out people that were keeping reefs and find out different tricks. And, and I've made mistakes. I bought cheap lights, I bought cheap skimmers. And, oh, you know, you regret, it, you regret it in the long run, you know. But you, I try to do my research first. To, just to jump in, so you know you're going to kill something like that. It just That's yeah. just stupid. You know, you got to take your time, look into it a little, learn. And again, that's what our club is for. When we meet our club, there's almost always somebody in that club that knows what you want to raise, that can help you out. <laughs> And, and, and not for nothing, yeah, and not for nothing, 
this is an excellent product, but without doing your homework, you can still screw it up. Nothing is bulletproof. You still have to know, okay, you're not just going to pour water out the sink in there, throw the fish in there. I mean, you do have to know and get that foundation. Every big structure is built on a good foundation, and the foundation is doing your homework before you jump. And you'll, in, so. and you'll still make mistakes, but oh, learn sure. from your mistakes. Don't keep doing it, you know? Right. I kept wondering why all my shrimp disappeared. The first saltwater tank I got. And I says, oh, yeah, I guess uh, that Rass loves shrimp. I'm buying him expensive dinners. It's like Red Lobster every night in that tank. Yep. So you live and you learn. <laughs> it's like I put a boutique in my plant tank one time. He ate all my snails up. <laughs> yeah. And I Gene think we've says, all had yeah, those experiences. Gene says Palmolive's <laughs> great. Gets rid of everything. <laughs> <laughs> And it softens your hands while you do this. <laughs> oh my heart. For those okay, of you okay, that Madge. remember that pitch. Okay, that pitch Showing the years. So, yeah. Right, I Jerry, wanna, we, I wanna... we thank you for taking uh, time out of your busy schedule and yeah, your Friday thank night. You. And thank Thanks you for, for having Penn, us. Being, thank you on for being so of Penn, generous. On, on behalf of Penplex, our entire staff, uh, you know, thanks for doing what you guys and gals do to keep the interest, to be an information source. Not everybody wants to Google. You know, Google's great. Yeah. That's not yeah. the answer to every single question. Yeah, right. It's That's by right. talking to Steve and Joe and D and everybody else in the group and being in the same place and looking at fish. Um, you know, that's really uh, just as valid way of sharing information as right. using the computer. So thanks to you guys for having me. Thanks for letting our company talk about some of our products. And uh, again, I look forward to seeing people in person just yeah. as soon as possible. Yep. Thank you for your support over the years and, you know, your donations and stuff that always was, keeps our uh, club alive, you know. And yes. uh, I know you've been a sponsor yes. for a long time with us. You know, you always helped us out. And we Great. appreciate support that. Support the local businesses, people. Amazon Absolutely. is awesome, but the local businesses are the ones that you come when everything goes wrong. <laughs> Go right. to them when everything is going right. Get the proper That's foundation. Get the work in. Get the homework in. Right. And 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 I'm going to say, Jerry's a record because he's got the most super chats I ever got in any presentation. Probably got the, the best viewership of uh, <laughs> any presenter. No shortcoming to any other prior presenters. But I gotta feed the I gotta feed the ego a little bit there. I gotta put Wait, a smile on his face. See, see you that know, when, smile right there. When right I'm a there. little kid, when I'm that 12 year old kid, I, I dreamed maybe of being a baseball player, or you know, I might have set my goals to become an astronaut and go in space, but never in a thousand years did I think I'd be able to <laughs> present online to the Brooklyn Aquarium Society. But <laughs> <laughs> we we're glad to make your dreams come true. <laughs> Talk about again, hitting Seriously. the bucket. I had a lot of fun great. tonight. I, yeah, hope, it, it, I hope people had some fun too. Oh, definitely. When you I, wish I, upon a star. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Your story of how you started off is pretty much like mine. I was 10 years old. I got on my bike. I went to Coney Island Avenue. It was a small store. And you come back, like you said, with a dollar fifty fish. And you, know, you put it in the tank. And you know, like my 10-gallon tank, I think I must have changed it. 10 times in two years, you know, over different aquascaping. And, you know, I, I would I have cowboys and Indians in there one time on oh, army man. figures, you know. I had you know, army I men, those little things, green you know. army men. I had a bunch yep. of those. They were yeah. fighting. Now I'm more of a natural biotope with my tanks. But, uh, you know, you try everything when you're kids, you know. And oh, uh, like I said, my father always had tanks, always had big cichlids and, you know, Severums and Dempseys and Oscars, you know. You branch out from that, you know. And, and I want to put a challenge out to people. Anybody that goes out and gets the aqua floor or, or actually gets one in the giveaway, I want you to take a picture of it. I want you to do a setup. I want you yeah. to take a picture of it and post it on the Facebook sure. page because that may be an entry to the next giveaway. I'm, I'm thinking that's a good hmm. idea. I want to see people using these things. Great I wanna, idea. I want to get good pictures idea. of that product in the tank set up. And the first people that are able to do that, I'm going to have a special gift from my own personal collection i'm i'm gonna get something out of the archives and i'm gonna i'm gonna send something to just that remember this or just she. remember there's children that watch this too david <laughs> well i'm not gonna get the figure <laughs> remember those figures we have in the storage <laughs> with the that's that's a quiet <laughs> joke i don't know we had a bunch of figures that uh weren't exactly appropriate that somebody donated <laughs> a lot of the adults like them <laughs> a lot of the adults like them the kids were like hey why is dad buying so many of those <laughs> But yeah, and, and they're not going in the tank. They're not going in the tank. You never see where they end up. 
they, they go home and you never see them again. But, uh, thank you, Jerry. We, with that, right. I'm going to wrap it up. We've been going an hour and a half. I want to thank all of you guys for uh, sitting in with us and, and making the club what it is. And, and um, our me members stick with it. We'll get there eventually. Yes. Right, and yeah. um, if I missed your comments, I try not to miss the comments. I went through here. Keystone Clash is happening September 25th of this year. I'm going to run through this, make sure I don't miss any. Great. Okay. Carol <laughs> said, best presenter ever. Uh, Mehman Rock says, oh, yeah, great. Great, D. See you guys rock. They like his Iron Man theme. <laughs> oh, that 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 track was a winner. I'm stealing that. One. <laughs> um, and uh, but 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 and go Mets. Oh boy. Okay, come on, David Lunt. Right. Really go see my yep. Mets down there. Go Mets. You got another fan here. You got another Mets fan over there. So uh, yeah, everybody, thank you for sitting in. And with that, subscribe to the YouTube channel, Brooklyn Cramp Society on YouTube. And good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Thanks, good night. Thank you again, good night. Thank you.